we're here in the Academy Nerve Centre ahead of uh, the FA Youth Cup tie against North Greenford United next week. We've got with us defenders Tom Scott and Toby Civic. Toby, it's been a fantastic year for yourself, hasn't it? Obviously, Watford, Newcastle, Chelsea, signing a contract. Go through the year in your own words, how you found it. Um, it's just been an outstanding first year for me. Um, coming to the club, signing the under-16s, getting my first year scholar. And after that, just getting a pro contract to start pre-season has just been excellent for me. I'm buzzing. Tom, you've put in a number of man of the match displays already this season. Um, tell us how you found it coming into the 18s as well, because we picked you up from Reading, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, I got released from Reading at the end of last season, and then I come to Wimbledon, and like, I just played a couple games on trial, and then they signed me. The boys have really like took me in and just made me feel welcome. So I was at home, and then I started just being myself on the pitch, and then like people like Tobes have helped me, and I like, just like develop and stuff. So I feel like I'm really getting into it now. And Toby, you obviously want, want to emulate Toby's qualities. You want to sign a contract with the Dons one day. Yeah, definitely. Um, tell us about his qualities. What does he bring to the team? Um, well, Toby's an outstanding defender. He doesn't get beat 1v1 at all. He's brilliant in the air. Like the other week, he, well, just this week, he scored a goal for the under 21s. Um, so he gets forward quite a bit as well. He recognises when to. And one thing that um, Mark's working on with me is dropping off and giving deeper angles. And then whenever I'm on the ball, Tobes always giving me an angle. He's always an option. He talks a lot, so that's reassuring for me and the rest of the back line. He gets us up, and obviously his pace is really good as well. Toby, a lot. this lad's made quite an impact, hasn't he? I mean, he's, yeah. he's very good on set pieces, isn't he? Yeah, his quality, um, even at the back throughout the game, just talks, helps everyone on the pitch, uh, makes everyone's life easier. Um, his quality on the ball is outstanding, especially in the final third. Hurts any opposition defence. And he's just, he's just a great player to have in the team, great character to have out inside and outside the dressing room because everyone, I think everyone needs a player like Tom in their team to keep, them, to keep everyone going and everyone's confidence high. Good stuff. Um, you're predominantly with the development squad now. You and Paul Callenby stepped up to that. Yeah. How do you find the transition coming back down to the 18s though? Um, some, it can be a bit difficult uh, because of our mindset and stuff because it's easy for players to step down and think, oh, this will be a lot easier, but... At times it's not easier because 18s, 18s level strikers are like to run behind instead of showing up to feet. So mentally it's a bit, it's not too tough, but just got to be switched on at all times. And Tom, for yourself, you've already made the step up to, to be around the development squad on a couple of occasions. Just take us through that experience. What's that been like? Yeah, well, I, um, I played for them twice now. And I think um, it was when I first heard about being in the development squad, I was really excited and I was buzzing to have my opportunity. But... It, um, it was a massive step up for me but it was like made to feel quite normal because obviously I was playing alongside Paul and Toby who I played alongside before so I was just quite comfortable with it and then so they were, they took me through it and um, players like Seth, Toyosi, Alfie, there's those players who we're speaking to in the change rooms and stuff just helped me out there on the pitch so it was a lot easier than I thought it would be because all the boys had talked me through it. It was really enjoyable. Let's go through the squad to introduce it to the to the Dons fans who perhaps don't know about the new crop this year. We'll start off with the goalkeepers first. I think Jack Wingate obviously played the last big game against Chelsea, but he's probably going to be doubtful for the game against North Greenford. But we've got Joe Bursick as well. What kind of qualities do they bring to the side? Well, I think Jack's a very good player. Obviously, played with him a couple of times when we was at Reading. He talks a lot, which is really good for the side. So when we're defending, he will always talk. Even when we're going forward, he'll tell the defence what to do. So just to keep us on our toes at all times. And um, he's made a brilliant couple of outstanding saves from when I've seen him. So, and obviously Joe, distribution is absolutely fantastic. He's brilliant with bringing things out of the air, which is just take the sting out of the game. But the both of them are real, real quality goalkeepers. And I think that even though Joe being a first year and Jack being a second year, if Jack's out, I think Joe can step up and do well. Brilliant, Toby. Um, defensively as well, yeah. apart from you guys, obviously Paul Callan by. Sean Bird's come in from Brentford as well, yeah. but also Nick Okoto and, and Asazi, they've been brilliant going down the wings, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, um, the defence is really solid. Um, if we take players out, we just always know there's bundles of pace still in the defence to keep up with their strikers. So our defence is always strong, um, there's no doubt about that. But it's throughout the team where we have to think if we struggle, um, will they get background for us? And we know that they will. So our defence is it's very strong, like it's always competition to get in the start in the 11. So um, Tuesday will be a big task for us. Tom, um, in midfield, obviously we've seen the likes of Alfie Egan and Senna McKellar step up to the, to the development squad, but it's given a chance to the likes of Nathan Wood and Judah Chapman to shine. Also, Anthony Hart again, he's quite yeah. a good talent as well, isn't he? So tell us about the midfield. Um, I think our midfield is 
very, very strong. Uh, like you say, you've got players like Anthony, who is technically outstanding. He can hit the ball like for a massive. He's got a massive range of passing. He can hit any ball. Um, sees it really well. Judah has a lot of flair. Very talented. He's a very instinctive footballer. So he'll play how the game's going. So say he'll drive at someone and he'll beat two or three players, which is like something that we don't see often. And they just like bring it out of the blue. Um, players like Ethan Nelson Roberts. He's very good. Very powerful. Got a brilliant engine on him. And as you say, like the wider play, uh, wide players like Callum, Nathan, and Antonio, got a lot of flair in all of them. They're all quick. Technically, all three of them are brilliant, and they're just a real threat um, going forward. And Toby up front. I mean, we've got goals there in, in Jade Nagui mm -hmm. and Tino Carpini, but but also Reese Williams Bowers. He's not really afraid of anything, is he? He's, he's great mm -hmm. up front. Yeah, no, he's a great. He's a great player to have in our squad. Um, he just wants the best for us. He, although on the pitch, he might you know, get at us, but that's just to raise us because he knows that we're better than what we are. Um, results haven't been going our way this year, but everyone just knows that if we keep going, the goals will come for the strikers and confidence will just f f uh, flow throughout the team. So yeah, our strikers are just top draw. Robert, I'm sure Rob, Mark Robinson has like a hard selection to put the strikers in the starting eleven, And obviously they're all disappointed when they're not in the starting eleven, but it can only work harder to get back in it. Absolutely. Um, Tom, we were just talking outside about your kind of day. Um, tell us about it, because I mean, it starts at like five in the morning. How do you combine the education yeah. and the football? Um, so, obviously I wake up at five. Um, I get the training from about, I leave very early. <laughs> so I just rush, have breakfast, get out of the house. And then um, I catch quite a few trains to get in. And then uh, Wimbledon, I meet the first team goalkeeper coach, Ashley Bays. And then so we get the train into Berrylands and then we'll walk from Berrylands to the training ground. And um, we'll have, obviously, we'll train, we'll get in, we'll do jobs, uh, clean the pros' boots, just all the different things. And then obviously we'll all go out and train at 9.15 to about half 11-ish, come in, have lunch. And after lunch we'll go to Bounce, uh, which is like the gym work we do, which has really been helping us. Um, but as you are saying, with the education, so Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, we're at Southwoods Academy. And so... We'll train and on a Monday, we'll train in the afternoon and we'll have education in the morning. And on the Wednesday, we'll just have education all day, which is sort of our rest day because on Tuesdays when we train, we do a really hard session. So our Wednesday will be our rest day. Mm. Toby, how much is having Southfield Academy there now? How does that help the development of the squad being so much more professional now? Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a massive bonus because last year, um, the injured players, when we went to Mitchum on a Monday, it was hard for them to really do anything because of the facilities. But now we're at Southfield's. There's a swimming pool, there's a gym, um, so the injured players can either go do a light swimming session, they can do a gym session with Jenna, uh, just to like strengthen them up and keep them fit, so when they come back they're not as rusty as they were would be last year. So Tom, just looking into sort of like the game itself now, North Greenford, um, leading up to it, Toby was saying about how the, the form's been so far this season, it's been a little bit tricky, but we've got back on the results with Peterborough, mm. how do you see it going into this game? Well... We just sort of take one game at a time. Obviously, we've got Milton Keynes first, which is the big rivalry. So we'll look at that one first, like not get too ahead of ourselves. But obviously, it is in the back of our minds, North Green Food, and we all want to do well. But we'll just take one game at a time, Milton Keynes first. Hopefully, we can beat them. We've got the confidence to do so now, so I don't mm. see why we won't beat them. And after Milton Keynes, hopefully beat North Green Food. And Toby, with the North Green Food game, I suppose they're going to kind of see it as their, their Watford, their Newcastle, like it was yeah. with us. They're going to be looking to to put us out on our own turf, so what have we been doing in terms of preparation? Um, we're just keeping our heads, we're just keeping it cool. We know that this is going to be their big cup final, as every game is for them, because they want to get far and make their own history, but we're not too worried about them, we're just focusing on ourselves, focusing on what we're going to do against them, and just be bright for our fans and show them what we can do and what they're looking forward to in the future. Excellent. Um, Toby, I mean, you've obviously played in the, the big stadiums in front mm. of the crowds and so on, but for Tom as well, it's your opportunity to play at the home ground in front of the home fans. How much are you looking forward to that? I can't really describe it. Because um, obviously I've never played in front of the Wimbledon fans before. But obviously when we watch all the first team home games, the atmosphere is absolutely amazing. And it would just mean everything to me to play in front of all the fans and hopefully get the win. Good note to finish on. Tom, Toby, thanks very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.